The 80s had some of the greatest cartoons ever. And they had to, because they weren't just entertainment, they were marketing. Marketing to some of the greatest minds of the future, the children of the 80s. This is Mike with the Tidarium Hanger, and join me on this trek through my favorite 10 cartoons of the 1980s. You're listening to the Tidarium Hanger, where we talk about all things vintage to modern Star Wars Transformers video games, and, well, pretty much anything 80s. So, let's get right into this. Number 10. Number 10 is a Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And this came late in the 80s. I personally tried my hardest to not like this TV series. To not like this line of toys. But I have to say, it was different, refreshing. Still has not had anything to this day that came out that was similar that had the same feel and the same differentiality that this thing has turtles were raised in the sewer living in the sewer they had april o'neill and they had splinter and went on crazy wacky fun adventures against shredder and his foot clan turtles went on to having a multitude of different types of creatures in the world, different kinds of bad guys, and it was it was a lot of fun. There are way more of those toys today than I ever thought they ever made. And it blows my mind to see how many, what, 135 different figures that they made. Number nine. DuckTales is our number nine on the list, and this was a fun little Disney cartoon, and I have to say that every little boy needs a hero. And my hero was Scrooge McDuck. Scrooge McDuck valued the dollar, valued the penny, and swam in his money. But I also have to say, the wacky adventures of Huey, Dewey, and Louie, that was kind of fun. I always actually gravitated more towards what Scrooge McDuck did. I don't know why, that was my thing. But the Huey, Dewey, and Louie getting into trouble all the time. Uh, maybe I was just a little too old for that to appeal to me. But I still enjoyed the show nonetheless. I thought it was fun. I thought it was a wild, wacky adventure that we got to go on. Well, it seemed like every day. Number eight. Number eight on the list is the Smurfs. And I have to say that the Smurfs were around since 1981, I think till 1987, and they were a staple of Saturday morning for kids. An hour and a half was lopped off to watch Smurf episodes. And it was like 12 to 16 minutes per episode, and they would put in I don't know, eight, nine, ten episodes crammed into that hour and a half time frame. Or 90 minutes, my math's off. But it was a lot of fun. You knew what you were getting. They were just a bunch of blue creatures living in this little world. It also taught you the a lot of values, the value of hard work, teamwork, and uh, morals. And then, then, of course, these little Smurfs would get chased down by Gargamel and Azrael, and of course it was a lot of fun. I know this is actually targeting a younger audience, but hey, I was really young when it came out, and I really enjoyed it, and to this day, it brings a smile on my face to see it. They did move on to a couple of live action adaptations that I don't think fared very well. Number seven. Number seven on my list is Voltron Force. Now, Voltron was a Japanese license of a cartoon that was brought over to the U.S., dubbed into English, so it, there was kind of a lost in translation there, and it was very mature themed. Seeming like an adult kind of anime type of a cartoon, so truthfully, as a kid watching this, the only parts I even paid attention to was when they formed Voltron and started to fight. But I gotta tell you, that was so amazing looking and so exciting that it was worth sitting through a bunch of boring dialogue as a kid 
to get to the part that they formed Voltron on those five lions. And it's like to this day, Voltron still has a very massive presence and I know there's a lot of high-end collectibles coming out for it. And they even had the reboot on the Netflix with the uh, Defender Voltron, which was actually a great show. It caught on with modern day kids and modern day collectors and adults, kids of all ages. Number six. Number six on the list is Centurions. Centurions was a Kenner toy that was adapted to a cartoon to sell those toys, but it was a lot of fun. It's such an 80s toy line, 80s cartoon, mustache and all on Max Ray, but this is the adventures of Max, Jake, and Ace as they take on Doc Terror and his henchman, Cyborg Companion Hacker. And it's wild and crazy, they get their suits beamed to them from a space station and there's all these different weapon systems that they have. I actually plan on doing a toy review of this soon because it's really an awesome toy line. The cartoon is great, holds the number six slot on my list of ten. Number five. Number five on my list is GoBots. GoBots is not just a generic version of Transformers, but GoBots was its own license and actually preceded Transformers a little bit in theory. But with the GoBots show, most people say they like GoBots today because of the comics and hated the cartoon. But I gotta tell you, I like the cartoon for a multitude of reasons. One of the reasons is the on-screen presence of each character matched their toy so much better than some of the other cartoons of transforming robots and cars and airplanes. The other thing was there was a constant amount of action in this. They were constantly doing something and I enjoyed it. Downside is every single episode was about the same kind of content where the bad guys were bad guys, the good guys were good guys and there was no dynamic change and no shift from the beginning to the end and really no episodes had any bearing on the next episode. But as a six-year-old kid playing with Hot Wheels that turned into robots, I didn't care. They were way cooler than other Hot Wheels that I had at the time, let me tell you that. I, for one, like this show. I don't care how many haters are out there. I still like it. Number four. Number four on my list of the greatest 80s cartoons ever. Bionic 6. I loved this show. I have to say that this show really blew my mind and the fact that when it first came out I thought it was two characters added to the Fantastic Four to make the Bionic 6 and I wasn't interested in it until I saw one episode and it took one episode of Bionic 6 to make me realize this is an amazing franchise. Can't believe it's not made into a movie today. Wish it would be. Jack Bennett and Mother One, they all had multiple names, code names, and a whole family of people from all different walks of life that came together in a bionic six million dollar man kind of way. These, they were enhanced with technology, they fought enemies enhanced with technology, there was an intertwined plot between the evil Dr. Scarab and his brother was actually the professor that gave the Bionics to the Bionic 6. Wonderful storyline, and there was a whole lot of crazy nonsense going on. The technology in it, of course, is far beyond the 80s and far beyond today. But it's still fun to watch, still fun to reminisce, and the toy line that only lasted a year and a half, two years, is still an amazing toy line with die-cast figures and a whole lot of fun, a whole lot of color. Wish they'd remake this again today. Number three. Number three is MASK, and MASK stands for the Mobile Armored Strike Command with a K. And when this show came out, and the toy line subsequently, from Kenner also, really captivated my mind. I have to say that even the top shows on my list 
got bumped backwards and, and forgotten about when this came out for a short while, at least six months to maybe eight months, nine months, that this was all I cared about as a kid. This is amazing. So, hey, maybe the marketing worked on me. But I got to tell you that the show, the premise, the of course, it talks about teamwork. They had at the end of every show a lesson to learn. Uh, of course, they did throw in the old obligatory kid with his obligatory best friend robot, Scott and T-Bob. And the vehicles that transform, I mean, it's just amazing. Even if they make this into a movie today, it would succeed. And I actually plan on doing a storyboard one day on what a live action movie should look like and how it would incorporate using 1980s vehicles and why it would be so amazing to come out with those 80s vehicles. I would love to see that. But this cartoon with Matt Tracker going up against Venom and his gang of wild crazy bad guys in wild crazy plots that still blow your mind because well they actually make no sense but they're a whole lot of fun and they always a cause for action number two number two on my list is G.I. Joe none other than G.I. Joe I have to say that this show was a lot of fun. It carried forward a toy line from the late 50s, early 60s, I believe, that was a 12 inch, brought it down to the three and three quarter inch, copying the Star Wars. And then the focus was actually on the figures and the vehicles, which made it so much more fun as a kid to collect. And you were really brought in to have ties and connections to each character, of course, each figure. This is a covert squad of elite military and as a kid wanting to buy the toys I tell my parents that this G.I. Joe is like the real military no it's not but it was still a whole lot of fun and it was wild and crazy it had actual real life cameos from the likes of wrestler the sergeant slaughter guy and it was a whole lot of fun now they did make a couple of live action movies based off of this cartoon line and I don't think that the live action movies truly captured the spirit of the original cartoon, the original series, and therefore did not make it as far as they should have. Number one. Number one on my list of the best cartoons coming out of the 80s is none other than Transformers. And is a another Hasbro cartoon where robots from Cybertron were warring factions that ended up taking their fight to Earth. And on Earth, they continued the battle, looking for resources for energy. And yes, led by the brave Optimus Prime. This show, this entire franchise, has almost never gone away since the 80s. A lot of franchises, a lot of cartoons come and go. But Transformers has almost always had a presence in one way, shape, or form. And the reason is that they did this so well. I have to say that the writing wasn't the best, and they wasn't drawn the best, but the heart was there. Watching this show captured your mind. They, they went deep into different levels and different generations of Transformers to where it just really made you think there's a lot of depth to this show. And the first season wasn't a whole lot of depth, but when they took it past the first season, they knew they had a hit. They gave it a tremendous amount of backstory. And then, of course, the movie was amazing. The, the 1986 movie, although if watched today alone and not having any backstory, might, you might say it's not that great of a movie. I think it's an amazing movie. I think for the time in the 1980s, Transformers really killed it. But I want you to let me know what cartoons do you like? What would make your top 10 list? Do any of mine on my top 10 fall on your top 10? What did I leave out? And what did I put on this list that you say, no, no, no way? I wouldn't want that on my list. Thank you for watching. Tidy Hanger out.